agents. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, do we have any additions or deletions? <laughs> Staff, has, Staff has no changes to the agenda this evening. Great, thank you. And it looks like we have some presentations, or a presentation. Hi, Chief. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> and staff. I'm here tonight to present the 2022 Herb, Herb Ross uh, Officer of the Year Award. If you're not aware, uh, Sergeant Herb Ross, uh, the Sergeant Herb Ross Award is given each year to an officer who's demonstrated the highest levels of professionalism, integrity, and hard work. In addition, the officer must give back to his or her community. And the Capitol Police Department is very proud to announce that the Police Officer of the Year for 2022 is Daniel Vasquez. Officer Vasquez was born and raised in Watsonville and graduated from UC Davis with a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and a minor in Latino studies. Officer Vasquez is married, has two boys, and has another baby on the way. Officer Vasquez started his career as a correctional officer with the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office and was hired by the Capitol Police Department in April of 2021. Over the past year, Officer Vasquez has maintained a very positive attitude in all situations and a real genuine approach to the care and care for the community of Capitola. <coughs> Officer Vasquez supports the mission of the police department and his selection was made unanimous, unanimously by the department's command staff. When Officer Vasquez asked what he likes about the community of Capitola, he responded, I love the people, the culture, and the diversity. So please welcome me by congratulating Officer Daniel Vasquez as the 2022 Officer of the Year. Daniel Vasquez. <laughs> Uh, just to take a minute to address you. Um, for me, it's a pleasure working here in Capitola. I'm local from Santa Cruz County, and I went to school. I always wanted to come back here and serve my community. Being here in Capitola has not been a mistake, but a real, a real joy. Um, I would like to uh, thank the command staff, thank my coworkers, always. I've been in the department for about two years and half the time, like, what am I doing? And it's my partners who come and, and save me. Um, Herb Ross, great gentleman, family-oriented man, and devoted to his community. So something that reminds me of him is continuing, continuing his legacy as I work every day for this department. So thank you, and I'll see you in the street. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, congratulations. All right. And then do we have a report on closed session? So this morning, the city council met in closed session and reviewed four items on its closed session agenda. Uh, the council met with uh, staff and has no reportable items. Thank you. Do we have additional materials? Great, so we'll go to oral communications. Um, so oral communications, this is time for members of the public to address the council on any items that um, are either on consent or not part of the actual agenda. Come on up. Mr. Mayor and members of the council, my name is Bill Gray. I reside at 1440 Prospect Avenue. My family has owned that particular piece of property since 1921. So I guess that makes us long-term residents. I have uh, personally resided there for 10 years 
What I wish to speak to you about today is the, uh, pro the problems associated with the bluff uh, in terms of uh, maintenance of the trail and in terms of uh, the degradation of uh, the bluff and the uh, erosion of uh, uh, the bluff itself. Let me first thank the uh, Capitol Police for being so quick in their response uh, to the most recent damage. They were there within, I swear to gosh, minutes of the time the, uh, uh, the, the, the brush, the, uh, the bluff crashed in this point in time uh, with uh, caution tape trying to keep people uh, out of the area. Uh, and that was much appreciated. Problem with that is the caution tape doesn't last very long. Uh, it lasted 20 or 30 minutes perhaps in keeping people out. And then we were back to where we were before. The RTC came out yesterday and put up barricades on the, on the path. Uh, that was helpful as well but that didn't last very long either. People found a way to get around the, around the barricades. So what I'm, what I'm talking about are two things. Uh, one is the pathway uh, that is on the east side uh, of the bluff overlooking, uh, overlooking the railroad and the condition that the pathway is in currently. And if, uh, if you've received your uh, notice from the RTC February 2nd meeting, you'll see that pathway in living color. The uh, uh, width of the pathway is down to 16 inches in some places down to 24 inches in others. That's about the, uh, the width of the center aisle on a 737. Uh, it's uh, not the width that's necessary for safely uh, going across the pathway. And let me assure you, people do it at all times of the day or night uh, with flashlights, without flashlights, uh, and in various conditions. In one, one case some years ago, a gentleman fell down some 15 feet, uh, and that was before the erosion that, uh, that we currently have. So it seems to me that the first instance is making a decision, you folks making a decision, on how important that path is and maintenance of the path. Am I done? You can you can wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. Can I can I wind up wind up? Yes. And no, secondly, uh, taking a look long term, and we need your help. Uh, we need your help uh, uh, to work with the RTC to work towards uh, hopefully a comprehensive uh, approach for stabilizing the bluff that includes the RTC, includes the city, which has a memorandum of agreement for maintenance of the, uh, of the trail and, and the property owners. And there are some of, the, some of uh, my neighbors are here this evening. We're all available to answer questions in the event that uh, you have any. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Gray. Any other public? Good evening, Council. Um, my name is Jason Shepherdson. Um, know a few of you. Um, I'm just introducing myself. So uh, I've been a resident of Capitola since 2010. Uh, attended Cap Cabrillo, Cal State Monterey Bay, and um, been a resident uh, since then. Um, I am also on the Commission on the Environment um, last meeting. Um, I became the vice chair of it as well. And um, what I'm really looking to do here is just kind of be proactive. Um, clearly our community has gone through a lot lately. Um, and in my eight months of being on the Commission on the Environment, um, I've just kind of realized that being proactive is gonna be important. And um, so that's why I'm here. Um, uh, being a part of the Commission on the Environment, I really see this um, immediate emergency and the forthcoming decisions that will occur um, 
as an opportunity to really be involved in, just try to be helpful. Um, and uh, just being proactive on this all as well, you know, a personal goal of mine for the commissioning environment is to kind of help with many things, but also beach cleans as well. Um, and uh, doing some of my own research and talking to Save Our Shores, uh, Krista's Rogers, who's the program director. Um, there's a lot of debris on the Capitol Beach right now. And um, speaking with Krista, she kind of quoted um, a beach clean at about six or $700 a clean for um, a city organization. Um, and that they are busy up until the earliest they could do another beach clean is uh, March. Um, so uh, to not take up too much time, I'm on the commissioning environment. I wanna be involved with what's going on moving forward and just be helpful. Um, did a little bit of my own homework on how we can start to get the beach clean. Um, I think being proactive is important because I learned myself that there and I don't know, I know the city um, parks projects um, is also working with Save Our Shores as well and I don't know what communication they've done. Um, I believe that they've spoken with Krista, um, but uh, it was news to me that they at least said that they couldn't do one until again as early as March. Um, and uh, so that's about it. You know, I would like to be a part of meetings and just be present and available. And uh, that's all I got to say. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other members of the public? Or online? No? Okay. All right, that takes us to staff comments. One quick comment here this evening. Uh, this evening we have Tamar Burke with uh, the city attorney's office, assistant city attorney who will be representing the city attorney's office at the meeting this evening. I know she attended one of our meetings virtually uh, previously, but this is the first time she's in person. So welcome. Great, welcome. I'm really excited to be here in person. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited to have you, thank you. <laughs> Any council comment? Yeah. Um, thank you. Well, I just wanted to talk a little bit about how well our beach cleanup went this last Sunday. Um, Mayor Kaiser and I have these great shirts on from all of that heavy lifting we did <laughs> for um, out there on the beach. And I just wanted to thank our community for stepping up. I was an overwhelming <clears throat> turnout with hundreds of people who just as you heard from our speaker, want to do more. And so I look to our staff here to um, let us know as soon as possible and our community know as soon as possible um, when there's the next opportunity to support. In addition to that, there are current opportunities to support the city of Capitola and um, there's lots of fundraisers going on and, and things of that nature. And so um, you can find all of that on social media and through our city's website. Um, and also, I believe, and I'm looking at our city manager here to help me with the term we have our um, in our community in our chambers. We have opened a help me with the, the small, right small, small business, business association. Or no, sorry. Small business, the federal Small Business Administration, administration. is being housed in our community room uh, to help small businesses recover from damages. Right, and so for our community members that were impacted and businesses, that's available here um, through the city of Capitola. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments? Good. Well, yeah, um, Sunday was great. We had a bunch of members of the PD show up as well, and it's just always fun to see everybody out um, enjoying this beautiful spot that we're in. So big shout out to everybody that showed up. Um, I'm sure recreation is gonna um, keep us posted on hopefully more to come. And um, so, our social media, those sort of things are great to keep an eye on so that you can be aware of what's coming up. Um, yeah, and just a huge shout out to Public Works too. They continue to work around the clock. And um, something to take off of what Mr. Gray said, if you see barricades or caution tape, 
it's probably best to abide by that and maybe not go into the area that is behind that because it is there for a reason. So um, just be aware we're still dealing with lots of um, backlash from the storms. So just better to be safe than sorry. So thank you. All right. We did have a special visitor. <laughs> um, yes, it's going to be in a okay. yes. We'll hear all about our special friend. Okay. So we can go on to item eight, which is the consent. So these um, are all items um, that will be enacted in one motion in the form listed below. No separate discussion um, unless somebody needs to pull an item. If anybody wants to make a motion on the consent or pull anything. I'll motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you. I'll second. Great. First and second. Aye. 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 Great. Passes unanimously. We'll take us on to nine. General government. We're on item A. <clears throat> this is our winter storm event update from staff. We're actually doing a slideshow like the way we used to do before the pandemic. So it'll be interesting to see if it works and it goes out on Zoom. Yeah. Um, first off, I know we touched on a couple of these things during council comments, but I'm just going to do a little bit of a recap on sort of where we are with the current state of emergency and our efforts to uh, clean up and help people recover. First, we declared an emergency declaration, made the emergency declaration on the 4th and issued an evacuation for low-lying areas of the village. The next day, the 5th, is when we had the storm surge and the waves that caused so much damage in our community. Uh, we met the day after that. City Council ratified the emergency order. And then from that point on, we were both working at recovery as well as prevention for future storms. And you'll recall on the 8th is when there was another significant rainstorm event and we deployed a large situation. We had our emergency shelter open. It's now been closed. Then we received a visit from the governor. Um, we had visits with FEMA. And if that wasn't enough, on the 19th, we got a press <laughs> visit from the President of the United States and our very own Mayor Kaiser uh, represented Capitola and actually traveled with the President in the motorcade. So quite a moment for the city of Capitola. I think all of us were there and uh, it'll be a day that I think Absolutely. Also want to note, well, I'll touch on that a little bit later, but I'll touch on it now, is, is the great job that our police department did coordinating with Secret Service. You know, having a president come and visit is no small task. Uh, and Capitola was able to, to pull it off. We pulled it off elegantly. Um, and our, our forces did an amazing job of keeping our community safe. Secret Service did whatever voodoo that they do to keep the president safe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so really quickly, I'm going to bounce through a few things that the city has done. Uh, we've been pushing out a lot of information. Uh, we'll be putting out another digital newsletter tomorrow that'll talk about more recovery efforts and more information for residents and businesses to get uh, how they can get help. A lot of interviews, a lot of uh, press opportunities, and then multiple visits from government officials, which is a pretty benign way of saying it, I guess. And we've also put together a recovery web page that's trying to categorize and sort of consolidate information for people about recovery and how they can get resources. Um, we've submitted our initial damage of uh, estimate of public damage. It's 2.6 million at this point. That includes the wharf, which is frankly, it's, it's going to be a moving target. Um, that's not the final number. Damage to the bridge, damage to the Hooper stairs, damage to the jetty uh, and to the bluff and the, the bluff in front of uh, just west of the village. And so the goal there is, is those are going to be the FEMA-eligible FEMA reimbursement projects. And my staff is working very closely with the FEMA representatives, the county, and Cal OES to make sure that we're getting those uh, damage assessments incorrectly. <coughs> As was mentioned during council comments, we coordinated with Save Our Shores on a beach cleanup this last weekend. 
Uh, we tried to limit the crowd a little bit because there was going to be only room for so many people. Um, but there was a lot of folks out there. There was a lot of enthusiasm, and we filled up an entire dumpster. When I say dumpster, that doesn't quite quantify how big it was. Shipping container uh, with driftwood and debris from the beach. Uh, we've also been coordinating with the Community Foundation of Santa Cruz County as kind of the conduit for funding. <coughs> Uh, so that if people want to give, they can give to the Community Foundation uh, and for their disaster fund to help help our community recover. We are also coordinating a potential benefit concert to take place in the village on the 18th. That will be subject to council's approval, which will come next meeting. Um, you may start hearing about this benefit <coughs> concert before the council approval, <laughs> because the council approval will be coming nine days ahead of time. So I just want to give you the heads up that it's not approved until you approve it, but at this point there's a lot of work that the BIA is doing, some of our local businesses, uh, as well as um, bands and volunteers to perform. So it sounds like it could be a really, really positive event. Our police department, as I mentioned, uh, really did a heroic <laughs> job of, of managing the, the POTUS visit. Um, they've continued to staff up and represent us at the County Emergency Operations Center and maintain, um, they maintain patrols and maintain regular patrols throughout the city and as well as the affected areas <coughs> within the city. Public Works, now a lot of this work is going to shift over to them. <laughs> They've been coordinating on making sure we're prepared each time there's a rain event. Uh, in addition, getting up fencing and protecting uh, areas that are damaged from the storm. Um, we have started emergency repairs to the Riverview pathway, uh, which you may recall was damaged during the storm. We are also in discussions with the county about responsibility for that damage, uh, and council will be getting updates on that as we move forward. Um, and then our, we had a site visit to the wharf with the engineering team, and I think that took place last week as well. Uh, planning staff, again, really has transitioned more into a sort of recovery mode. Um, planning staff really coordinated regionally to help set up these business, uh, the business recovery center that Council Member Brooks mentioned that we're hosting in our community room, as well as the regional disaster relief centers. We were looking at potentially hosting a disaster relief center in Capitola in coordination with the mall, but ultimately, um, I believe the disaster relief centers in our county are Watsonville, and then I think in the San Lorenzo Valley. And so they decided not on putting one in, in our region. So that's the presentation this evening. The staff is available to answer any questions, and no action is currently required on the site. Great, thank you. Any questions from council? I have a question. Is there any um, plans for a second beach cleanup at this point? I'm going to pivot to Nikki Bryant on our staff to talk about what her work on the volunteer side is, is yielding. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, as a member of the public had previously stated, we did reach out to Save Our Shores in order to identify if we could partner with them for um, another beach cleanup in the near future. And they are indeed um, booked. And so uh, we are currently working as City Manager um, explained on a fundraising concert and trying to um, identify if we might be able to do around the same time another beach cleanup. Um, no decision has been made, no date has been identified, but uh, we will keep council informed as to when a date has been decided. Thank you. I just wanted to make a comment uh, about our police department. I'm coming from the law enforcement background, heard a lot of great things from everybody on how well um, you all work with the Secret Service. I know it's not, not always easy, but it looked really good. It looked effortless and made us proud. Questions? Oh, yeah, go for it. Um, so you mentioned emergency repairs. How is that on Riverview? How is that different than normal, I'm looking at Jessica, normal um, repairs? So I'll give the first answer, and then if I flounder, Jessica, please feel free to correct me. And I know I took your thunder earlier with, with council comments, so, you know, I'll give you a moment there. Go ahead. So in general, when, the, when we do projects, when we hire somebody to do work, it has to go through a public bid process, so we have 
Right. And in fact, we have to state it publicly. We have to award to the low bidder. Under a declared state of emergency, when things are a hazard and have to get fixed, that declared state of emergency allows the public works director to hire somebody to fix it, to just take care of the problem. And so that's why it's an emergency repair. It's been done under the emergency authorization because of a declared state of emergency. And we will be front, front and we'll be using our emergency fund, which is set up for these exact purposes. Um, we do expect that other people will ultimately pay for this, um, but we would need to be reimbursed either whether it's from the county or from the DOL. Okay, and then my second question is you mentioned two million in damage so far. You referenced the wharf and the jetty being damaged. Um, did, and was there any damage to the flume? I don't believe that, yeah, we, we don't believe any damage has taken place. To the okay, so the cost of the over two million was just with those two. With those two plus and the, the Hoover stairs, the stairs. bridge. In that picture, there's some damage to one of the footings of okay. the bridge, as well as the cliff drive parking, that erosion, that issue there. And how long do these assessments take? Like, when do we have a better idea of... It's just ongoing, several months. I think this is when I need to turn to my public works director. <laughs> <laughs> we reached the limit of my knowledge. <laughs> um, so there's two places the funding is coming from. One is from Caltrans, and that is for the bridge because it's what's called a federal aid road. And those t projects typically take much, much longer on... I would expect money from them at the end of the year. <laughs> um, for the other FEMA projects, they usually assess those within three to four months, and we prioritize them. So depending on the priority and how much money we're asking for, they schedule out when they give funds for those type of projects. Is there anything that council can do to help um, persuade Caltrans to move faster? I know we've worked on building a better relationship in the last couple of years with them, and if there's anything we can do, any suggestions? I know that we have it, we're working closely with Caltrans at this point, and if we ever run into any roadblocks, I think letting council know and seeking sort of support from our state representatives would be the spot to go. But at this point, we've been getting a ton of really collaborative work from both FEMA, Cal OES, Caltrans. Everyone has been great to work with so far. Thank you. Any uh, public comment on this item? Anything online? Okay. Great. And we don't need an action. Okay. Well, thank you, staff. And that will take us to 9B, which is um, the Armed Forces flag request. Thank you so much, Mayor. If you give me one moment. Sure. I'll get set up. Thank you for waiting. One second. I'm, I know I'm doing that. It's not. city manager to the rescue, as always. I <laughs> <laughs> spoke too soon. <laughs> quick, quick escape. That always is what I'm my first. Okay, go. Oh, hey, that worked. Chloe, yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. The president word too many times and it was kind of <laughs> They were locking us down. <laughs> okay. We were flagged. Yeah. Literally. So, thank you, um, Mayor and Council, for your patience and understanding. And thank you, um, City Manager Goldstein. 
So I'm here before you to speak about a current flag request. And as you know, the, uh, the city council did approve our current flag policy back in 2021 in May. And that policy does include section five, non-governmental flags, which outlines the procedure for individuals from the public to request the city fly a non-governmental flag in place of our state flag for a certain amount of time. So we have a request before you this evening. It was made on November 2nd uh, to fly the armed forces flag here at City Hall during the week of May 13th through 20th uh, this year. A little background, so Armed Forces Day uh, is, a, is a current day here in our country, which honors those that are actively serving in our US military, which is the distinction between Veterans Day and Memorial Day. This is really for those that are actively serving our country. And it also does unify all six branches of the military. A little more background, just some timelines for you, because I love history. Uh, this day has, you know, comes to us from the 50s, so it's been around a while. And um, President JFK did proclaim it an official day in 1961, uh, kind of outlining this is every third Saturday in May. And uh, just a note, you, you may be curious, Armed Forces Day, though it is a celebrated day, is not one of our currently recognized 12 federal holidays. And just as recently as last year, President Biden, our, our new friend apparently, uh, did proclaim the third Saturday in May, Armed Forces Day, which continues that precedent, as I mentioned, and the upcoming day is May 20th, 2023. This is an image of the requested flag. As you can see, there's a depiction of all six of the US military branches, their official seals on the flag. And our recommendation this evening, it's a one or the other. It's up to you. You're our counsel. You can approve or deny. Thank you so much. And I'm, of course, available for questions. Thank you, Chloe. Do we have any questions from council members? OK, great. Any public comment? Anything online? OK. Great, well, we can go back to council deliberation on this item. I so move item 9B to fly the armed forces flag during the week of May 13th through May 20th in accordance to our policy V18 outdoor display of governmental and non-governmental flags on city property. So you made the motion? Oh, yes, that was, was that, it. That was, that was it. it. Did, oh, I, that was, did I, I blank? I think I blanked out and I didn't say I'm that so was, <laughs> That was a long read, sorry. <laughs> that was a first yes. and a second. Um, and I would just like to add in here before roll call um, that I request a follow-up item um, just to review our flag policy. As um, we keep getting more and more um, requests, I would like to see... Um, that it goes through with a council member support, possibly, and then um, a one-year turnaround, um, a re-ask instead of the six months. And thank you. Prior to the vote, I did have one point of clarification. Thank you. Uh, is, is this a recurring authorization or for this year, just so that we're clear about whether or not this is gonna be an ongoing thing or whether this is an authorization for this year? Um, seeing that, Mayor Kaiser wants to bring back the policy as a whole. Um, so let's do, do this for this year and then see what the outcome is for next year. So my motion stands as to approve 9B um, recommended action to approve the request for this year. Thank you. All right, let's roll call. Thank you. Aye. 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 Passes unanimously, thank you. We can move on to 9C, brought to us by Nikki. This is the Lifeguard Program Update. Again, when and if you want your lifeguard to come on. Yes, sure. And then Jamie can put your computer up. Okay. It's 
if if we need to chief him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought that this is good. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, Mayor, Council Members, um, just want to check to make sure you can hear me okay with yes. this microphone. Great, thank you. So um, the the item here before you is a report on the Capitola Lifeguard Services. Um, I just want to make note that this is uh, an opportunity to provide Council um, an update on activities related to this item and an opportunity to ask questions. Um, in order to support any questions that you may have, we have um, several individuals in attendance. On Zoom, we have um, the Santa Cruz Fire Department Division Chief Rob Young. Uh, here in Chambers, we have Central Fire um, District's <laughs> Chief Jason Nee, and um, we also have City Staff uh, Recreation Coordinator Brennan Howard. So um, with that, I will go ahead and begin my presentation. Um, okay. So to start off, um, this fiscal year, uh, council, for, council had approved a budget um, that includes the development of a city-operated lifeguard program. Um, a little over 10 years ago, the city did actually operate its own lifeguard program, but for various reasons, made the decision to enter into a contract with the city of Santa Cruz um, to uh, provide lifeguard tower services as they are a USLA open water lifeguard agency. Um, we have maintained that contract since 2012 and the uh, the last contract resolved at the end of the season in September. Uh, the contract had standard operating between Memorial Day weekend and Labor Day weekend. Um, now, it, for our junior lifeguard program, the city has a responsibility to ensure that the individuals that are uh, working with youth and on, um, are also lifeguard trained. And in order to accomplish that, in 2019, the city entered into a contract with Central Fire District. Um, at the time when we had entered into a 2019, Central was considering adding a lifeguard agency. And so this partnership um, had a lot of benefits for both agencies as we continue to work together. Since that time, uh, Central has merged with Aptos La Selva and has begun a strategic plan process. And so due to the heavy lift of both of those items um, are not able to identify a timeline in order for a lifeguard program. If you'll next slide, please. Thank you. Now, I wanna just give a little primer on um, an organization that we work very closely with in regarding this, which is the United States Life Saving Association, also known as USLA. Um, USLA is a professional association of beach lifeguards and open water rescuers. Um, the primary mission of USLA is to reduce incidents of death and injury through public education as well as um, upholding national lifeguard standards. In order to do that, they publish guidelines for open water lifeguard agency certifications and ultimately certify lifeguard employers through a review of their training program and policies. Um, this is a, a, a prestigious um, certification in order for lifeguard agencies as the majority of uh, any lifeguard operation in California do hold a USLA um, certification. As part of USLA, um, the 
region or the uh, sorry, the nation is divided into nine different regions and the city is part of the West Coast region known as the California Surf Lifesaving Association or CSLSA. Um, like, like the national body USLA, um, their mission is to provide a, be a professional organization that promotes beach safety and awareness uh, for open water life-saving standards. And they do this through several ways, including um, providing collaborative training opportunities throughout the state, um, through the certification of training programs, as well as for junior lifeguard programs and coordinating a regional competition. Um, the CSLSA also does the review process for any of our local chapters, which Capitola does have. Can you advance my slide? Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so as the city continues on the path for developing our own lifeguard program, um, we will be applying for a USLA Open Water Lifeguard Agency certification in September of 2023. I do wanna note that in the staff report, um, the, the date had previously said April. However, um, since this morning, uh, that direction has changed for us. So we will be applying in September. Um, this is typically a, a, a long process for new agencies as there are several things to make sure that are um, fitting to the guidelines published. Um, and we are entirely grateful for the partnerships that we had really uh, worked hard on last season where there was a collaboration amongst the three agencies with Santa Cruz and Central that really highlighted the public safety as we all worked together for the conclusion of the contract from Santa Cruz and Central helping to provide staff that at worked as supervisors in our towers um, and ultimately ensure a solid operation on our beach last season. Um, so as we started this year in order to identify what are gonna be the next steps for um, our training program and as we progress to apply for our certification, uh, the city as well as Santa Cruz and Central began to have conversations about what would be the right steps. Um, now the city of Santa Cruz Marine Safety Division holds a open water lifeguard agency certification. They also hold an aquatic rescue response team certification. Um, they are both USLA. However, the primary difference is, is that the lifeguard agency certification, the training program includes a prevention, water surveillance and public education aspect within that training. Whereas the AART certification is primarily training around response to a rescue. Um, Central Fire, as a highly qualified, having highly qualified staff who have come from a lifeguarding background and does hold an AART, um, was an exceptional partner for us as we were training our uh, junior lifeguard instructors to USLA standards. Um, however, the three agencies uh, collectively recognize that the appropriate partner for this upcoming contract is uh, the Santa Cruz Fire Department as they hold the appropriate USLA Lifeguard Agency certification. And so moving forward, the agreement with Santa Cruz um, will really help to bridge and ensure that the training standards are met for our operation in order to enhance a successful application for our USLA certification in the fall. Um, and if you'll advance the slide, please. Now, the fiscal impact for this, there is none. Um, the city uh, will contract with Santa Cruz for training services within the already existing budget. This includes city staff as part of the training cadre, and, it, and Central Fire will also be providing uh, qualified trainers to this um, training academy for this season. The 
uh, this budget, the FY 22-23 budget, had already included $17,000 in funding for these training services, and the original plan was to contract with Central Fire. However, the three agencies ultimately agreed that Santa Cruz is the more appropriate partner um, for this agreement. And so, as any recommended action, as I had previously stated, there is none. So, um, myself and anybody that is in attendance appropriate to this topic is available for questions. Thank you. Council, have any questions? I, I just have one. Nikki, what, which staff are being trained? Are these, is our, these are our year-round staff that are being trained, and how many? No, that's a great question. Yeah. So um, it ultimately is our seasonal staff that will make up our junior lifeguard instructors and our open water lifeguards that will be working our towers during the summer. Our uh, year-round staff will Brennan Howard will be part of um, the the training cadre uh, as part of an instructor, so that there will be a collaborative effort to train our staff and Santa Cruz staff. And just to be clear, once we receive our USLA lifeguard agency certification, we're then qualified to train our own to do so. Is that cost gonna? Is that fifteen thousand dollar? Cost to train every year gonna, is that something we're budgeting out for for that? Is the same? Is it the same price essentially? No. So there is a cost to apply for the USLA certification, but it is light uh, in the hundreds of okay. dollars. Um, the the seventeen thousand dollars or would no longer be a budgeted item unless um, we saw a need for a continued. Um, contracting partnership with one of the other fire departments in so, the area. So what's the cost for us to train? Now, once we become USLA certified, what's the cost to us to train our own? Well, it would be, um, it, it would be the staff's responsibility to- The one, the one person that- As well as individuals that we identify uh, through our seasonal staff hiring. So we would have um, returning staff that would become part of that training cadre and potentially, even though we would be able to stand on our own, um, we would probably continue to attempt to work with our regional partners as there is an advantage for working with our regional partners, but not on a contractual basis. Okay, thanks. Well, I'll elaborate on that a little bit. And I think maybe this is exactly what you just said. Longer term, our really hope is, is that we're standing up a fully independent program and we can do this all in-house. This first year, we're building up our capacity and building up our skills and team. And then even longer term, there has been a lot of thought about, look, if we have multiple lifeguard programs, is there the opportunity to collaborate with the city of Santa Cruz on running these academies, on collaborating with Central on doing these sorts of things? So it would transition to a different phase where basically we have our own USLSA certified program, USLA certified mm -hmm. program, and um, we wouldn't be contracting for a service, but maybe we'd be able to partner with them. That's the hope. And are, will we be seeing guards occur this summer with all the damage that's taken place? Um, so that is unfortunately not an answer that I can say at the moment. Um, there obviously needs nature needs to do some work um, and but we are having conversations about um, if if things are not appropriate what we might do um, but in general we're optimistic the guards will be able to operate as planned mm -hmm. I just had a question on um, so once we become USLA certified is it, does that expire or do, do we have to keep going back each year to re-up or retrain, I'm sure there's like developments and training that yeah. Brandon's gonna need to know. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, so 
any any agency that is USLA certified um, ev has goes through a three year cycle okay. in which they are doing a recertification process, and that application is yet again reviewed. And so, once we do actually achieve a USLA certification, then we will also be on that same three year cycle. Great, thank you. Question. I have a question. Yeah. Um, it seemed that there may have been two licenses uh, in question, uh, one being open water rescue license. Is that incorporated in the USLA? Yes, so USLA as an organization has um, a couple of different certifications and the open water lifeguard agency certification would be the one that we would be applying for. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, okay. Any, uh, Public comment on this item. Okay. Well, any other comments? Because we don't need to make a roll call or do a motion, so we have received the report. All right. All right. Great job, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So that takes us to item 10, which is adjournment. Happy Thursday, everybody. Have a wonderful evening and weekend. Appreciate everybody for showing up tonight and in whatever capacity, online, in person. Capitol strong, guys. Yeah. Okay. Woo. Okay. I'll start the loudest.